are, number five in the Heisei era with Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 from 1993. This movie in particular, it feels like it is action fucking bad. It really is! It's not a retread like Godzilla vs. Mothra was. Oh my god, it could have been amazing, but there are also a lot of things hindering it from being fantastic. One more pass through in the editing room, or maybe two, and it would have been a much better movie. It's a war of flesh and metal as Godzilla and Rodan duke it out with Robot Godzilla and a Pteranodon fetishist. Right off the bat, we're introduced to Mecha Godzilla 2. It is now a man-made war machine. Which I like a lot better, by the way. Made from technology from Mecha King Ghidorah, yeah. who died two movies back. The UN has created something called G-Force, and we're introduced to the fact that they've been creating all these anti-Godzilla weapons. There's Mecha Godzilla, but he wasn't the first thing to come along. That was actually Garuda. Which is a pile of junk, by the way. And it was designed by our main character, Pteranodan A. Johnson. I don't remember what his character's name is, but we're gonna call him Tyrannodan. Tyrannodan A. Johnson. He has an A. Johnson later in the movie across his helmet. <laughs> this character is bizarre. Why is that, Matt? I swear to God, he has a Tyrannodon fetish. Dude has, on the back of his shirt, Tyrannodon Forever. A custom-made jumpsuit that says Tyrannodon Forever. Like, what does that even mean? They recruit him to G-Force, and his superior, he describes Tyrannodon as single, no children, hobbies, Tyrannodons. That's what his Tinder profile says, anyway. <laughs> Oh my god, there's a robot Tyrannodon that he makes later in the movie. Ugh. He gets excited when they find out there's a Tyrannodon egg. But it serves no purpose to the movie. No, it it's doesn't. It's not like it pays off at the end with some joke or some way that only he knows how to solve the problem. It doesn't pay off at all. It's stupid. And we cut to this island where they found an egg. But not only did they find an egg, but they also find Rodan! <laughs> So is that your Rodan impression? <coughs> no, I wasn't doing a Rodan impression. Why? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you think of the new Heisei Rodan? I really like the way he looks. I think for some of the things, he could, it would have been better if he was a guy in a suit. I felt like he looked a little too wooden flying around there sometimes as a puppet. All of a sudden, like, as if on cue when Rodan shows up. So Godzilla comes up, it's this glorious kind of like Great. scene. Yeah. yeah, why was he there, by the way? He's drawn to the egg. Oh, right. Yeah, you forgot that already. We'll cut that part. We're We're filming this like, like literally Minutes. the same day that we watched the movie because Brian said he wanted to and he's already forgetting about yeah. plot points. I was already, I was thinking about Space Amoeba and I got confused. This initiates this battle between him and Rodeo. First battle of the movie, super early in. And it's a brutal battle, too. It really reminds me of Godzilla vs. Mothra from 1964. We get some more tooth and claw as opposed to kind of like the beam wars, but it was pretty good. Godzilla nukes him, and you know, they get off with the egg, and Pteranodon finds out that there's a Pteranodon egg, and he gets all oh, sorts he of is. excited. Yeah. He's just like, <laughs> you know, he, he's fucking there. He is the in the scene. Yeah, yeah. They find out that the egg is like emitting, like it, it's turning colors because apparently it gets afraid. That's how eggs work. And Dr. Azusa is the, the baby mama because whenever she's around it doesn't get scared and frightened. So right. it's like, okay, cool. I don't even know, the next series of events still confuses me. It's like some fucking fossil plant and Mickey Sagusa, the resident psychic of the Heisei era, is like, oh, I should take these to my psychic children and they should like look into it and put it on a table and oh look, there's the Mothra twins from 92 and what they end up finding out is like there's music locked away in the fossil. Well, yeah, Matt. Have you ever listened to a fossilized leaf before? This magic music from the magic plant I'm with you so far, yeah. This makes, makes total sense. Makes the egg go crazy, everything fucking explodes, and out comes Heisei Minya! Yes it is! 
<laughs> okay, I like it better than Minya. I was gonna say, for, better than Minya, Yeah, right? I'd say better than Minya. I mean, my god, at least it looks like Godzilla, for fuck's sake. Yes, it very much does. I think it had too much, like, fermented amniotic fluid in that egg or something, because it comes out, and its eyes are, like, half shut. It's like, oh, hello! Baby? Oh, no! I don't know why, it just, it seemed kind of it, fun. It seemed very fitting, yes. But they also make it a point to say this is uh, not a dangerous one. Right, Even though right. it's minutes old, you yes. don't know a damn exactly. thing about it. Exactly, They say that this is, this is not a Godzilla per se, but it is a Godzilla sword. And I'm pretty sure the Godzilla source in King Ghidorah was also a fucking carnivore. It was a dinosaur. And not eating fucking lettuce. And they're like, oh, he eats plants. Until he doesn't eat plants, he eats hamburgers. So I don't know what. The yeah. rules change on a dime, apparently. It does, it does. And uh, granted, this is a fucking Godzilla movie. You know, you can suspend your disbelief and stuff. But there are certain points to where you gotta, you gotta shed light a little bit on some of these things. Mickey Sagusa picks up Godzilla on radar, and he's ashore. And it turns out that he's actually being drawn to the baby. G-Force is like, okay, here we go! Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla square off. You know, the first time in almost like, what, 20 some odd years? Yeah. Almost. It's a fun battle. Mechagodzilla 2 is a nice update of the original. You know, he doesn't have the rainbow eye beams, but he has the rainbow, the rainbow. mega buster yeah. beam. Mechagodzilla 2 is coated with what I assume to be the same kind of diamond armor plating that the Super X2 had from Biollante. Which was a nice touch. What that would do is it would reflect Godzilla's heat ray back at him, but in this case, it actually absorbs Godzilla's heat ray, transfers the energy, and boom goes the dynamite. Great weapon. I mean, this thing like lays waste to Godzilla, and they end up shooting shock anchors into him, and it's similar to like the King Ghidorah thing. Godzilla somehow reverses it in you know another Deus Ex Machina moment. Godzilla finds the baby. The baby's like, you know, Dad, I know. And then Godzilla's like, Ooh, okay, and he, he storms away. It's incredible that Mecha Godzilla. The Japanese army, not enough to stop Godzilla. But a baby cries out, his baby cries out. That's enough to make him turn around. And this is where Baby Godzilla becomes the central plot of the movie. And honestly, I think that this is really one of the more fun, unique, and exciting plot points. Because now the military's like, wait a minute. After studying Baby, they find that secondary brain. They want to destroy that to paralyze Godzilla and to kill Godzilla. It's essentially what Godzilla Planet of the Monsters, the anime, basically had. This is the thermal exhaust port of Godzilla, you know, for those Star Wars buffs out there. Right. For some reason, Mickey Sagusa has to be the person to, like, do the killing shot because she has the force that can focus on this. And she's, like, in this conundrum thing where it's like, do I do it? Do I not do it? I don't know. It would be interesting if it was given to a more fleshed out character. But even though she spent the past three movies trying to kill Godzilla, now her conscience takes into effect. I like the idea of it, but it's the execution that DNA is there, but it's not complete. As soon as Godzilla leaves Kyoto, it really takes a downturn. Tyranno Dan, he kind of like disappears in the movie. He comes by for a date though. He has a fucking Tyranno Dan mobile cycle lander flyer thing. He's trying to show Actually, her the world. A whole new world. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, cut that entire part out. Save yourself eight minutes. This is where I say that, like, in this point especially, you could have gone into the editor and you could have cut things down and made things way more brisk. Or, if on the writing front, you could start combining characters. This Dr. Azusa, who's like the baby mama, she's useless. Because, essentially, Mickey Sagusa takes over this role in the next two movies. She has the connection to Baby. It would have been much more powerful had Mickey Sagusa been the one to create the connection. She's been in there since Godzilla 2, you know, attacking Godzilla, and now here she is, forming a human connection yes, that would have made with sense. this creature. These psychic kids come in, sing to the baby, the baby goes freaking nuts, and then this resurrects the dead Rodan, God knows why, who then they transforms really into Fire Rodan! And why does he have the firepower? They never really say. <laughs> because it's useless! Yeah. It doesn't do jack shit! I can understand if it penetrated the armor of Mechagodzilla, but it doesn't! There's no point other than for you to buy more toys. I like Rodan. 
I but he's too. useless in this movie. Out of all the monsters, I would agree. I, I like the idea of including him, but I do think that he could have been fleshed out a little bit more. Yes. Especially the relationship with, with Baby, because they say like, you know, oh, he's like Baby's half-brother because of that broken egg next to the I original I don't even egg. want to know how that works out, but okay. Well, Rodan's coming for the baby. He snatches the kid, and like Rodan drops the crate that these that Azusa and the baby are in, starts pecking at it, and I'm just sitting here. We're both wondering, like, okay, so is he trying to free the baby? Because the baby looks scared as shit. Yes, we like, didn't know. Mechagodzilla shows up on the scene. <laughs> Fire Rodan and Mechagodzilla have a fight. Was it a fight? I mean, you know, he shoots his beam, he flies around a little bit. Yeah, you know. but did it have yeah, any goes, impact? Nah, 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 nah. Woo -woo -woo -woo. We see him get fucking blown away once, and then we get to see him blown away twice, and not only blown away twice, but really blown oh away. Oh my god, twice. there's like a gaping hole in his chest, yeah, like Tony Stark style. At, at the mouth and oh, shit. Oh yeah, he is and out. Godzilla shows back up on the scene. Now Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla round two goes to Godzilla again. Up until the the glorious backpack scene and Super Mecha Godzilla. We're less than thrilled. About Super Mecha Godzilla. I don't really see it as a big difference than the regular Mecha Godzilla. I said it, it was a way to sell more toys. It's not terrible, it's but fun. it's also yeah. not it's not my There was a cool part when he was literally firing all cylinders. Every weapon on this thing was firing at once, and that was pretty cool. They lock on, you know, stay on target. They blow up his second brain. They blow it up and Godzilla's paralyzed and maybe dead. Ace Minya screams to the sky, and for the second time, Rodan rises from the dead. That poor son of a bitch, he's just like, let him like, die. He's like Palpatine. You know he what really is. Long have I waited to yeah. help Godzilla. Rodan wakes up and falls on Godzilla, and you know, there, there's a glitter show. They should use that in one of the newer Godzilla wow, movies. Could, yeah, it would be great. Except you know, maybe not Rodan. Where, where a main character sacrifices themselves to power up Godzilla to defeat a greater enemy. Let's also have this one main character not have any development in the movie and, and be very underutilized. And suddenly Godzilla is powered up Glitter Godzilla, complete yeah. with spiral ray power. It's pretty awesome though. Fucking nukes Mechagodzilla. I mean, it's it's beautiful. And for some fucking reason, everybody survives. The entire crew survives without a scratch or not even a broken bone or anything. When we mentioned that there should be a clear-cut human antagonist, this would have made the most sense. Have Mr. Military Guy be all in charge of Mechagodzilla, and I don't care how cliche it is, but he's like, finally, he's won. But then all of a sudden, Godzilla comes back, blows up Mechagodzilla too, and then the bad guy goes up in flames right. too. He gets his come Yay, it's, it's all done. Baby gets set off free, and we have a happy ending. Everybody's happy. But instead, this case, you know, it's just like the humans survive, and we're just like, oh, okay. They try to have some moral fucking lesson about artificial life, versus life. You said the director was going for no clear protagonist and antagonist, right? So uh, the, the writer said something along those the lines. The writer, yeah. So th that's a way to keep it vague and up in the air, I guess, I is guess. to have everybody win. The original idea, supposedly, was to actually have Godzilla die and stay dead, because this was in roughly in the early days of when TriStar got the rights to make an Americanized Godzilla movie. And the Heisei era was going to end at Godzilla 5 versus Mechagodzilla 2. How do you think that would have gone over if Mechagodzilla destroyed Godzilla once and for all. Uh, I don't think it would have gone over well. I don't see the public reacting well to that. No. At the end of the day, what do you think? I believe I ranked this one uh, number 15 out of the, what, 20? Basically in the bottom tier. And it's, it's really just because of the flaws that we pointed out earlier. I mean, I loved the action. It was fantastic. That first act, if it would have kept going with that, it would have been a lot higher. Yes. If they would have made the revisions that you stated during this review, you have a human antagonist, you make the movie a lot tighter, I think it would have been maybe even in the top 10. I feel like it's better than the previous movie. It's certainly better than the next movie. Ooh, what is um, the next movie? Oh, my God. Okay, so... 
I don't know if you realize this, but we have gone 40 years worth of Godzilla. Wow. And to celebrate the 40th anniversary, Godzilla versus Space Godzilla from 1994, everybody's most favorite kaiju movie of all time. We'll see if we survive that. And guys, with that said, for Godzilla's sake, keep watching Tokusatsu for the good of mankind and yourselves. I am Matt. Brian. Here to remind you to please, oh please, collect responsibly. And in the wise words of Rodan, 